It's probably starting to look like I'm sponsored by Tone Gym and Sound Gym at this point, but I'm really not because I'm not big enough to be sponsored by people yet. It's just that I genuinely <laughs> like and enjoy a lot of the tools, and a lot of the tools that you can use on these two websites are actually free. You do have to make an account to get access to them, but you don't have to actually pay for one of the subscriptions to get access to a lot of these tools. Da -da -da -da. Hi guys, it's Simon, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new here, then welcome to the chaos. I do all things music related on this channel, from putting up covers and showreels to show people what I'm like as a performing artist, to my favourite style of content, production, songwriting and audio engineering content. Today, I am doing something that is a bit of a crossover between my talky style content that I quite often do, where I'm just talking about music related subjects, and me as a gigging musician. I did another video previously going through some of my favourite vocal warm-ups that I do before gigs, and just trying to stress the importance to fellow gigging musicians of warming up your vocal. In that video, I think I mentioned the vocal warm up tool that exists on Tone Gym and how useful I have found that and how it is a useful tool that exists that you could use, but also that it allows you to make your own vocal warm ups. I've made one that I frequently do before my gigs. It just makes it easier for me to actually warm up at my gigs if I've got a routine that it just start it and go through it. But I've been meaning to make some others, but I keep putting it off. So today's video is mostly just, I need to do this thing. I've been saying I'm gonna do this thing for about a month. I still haven't done it. So I'm making a YouTube video where I do it so that I'll actually do it. And on the plus side, I can show you guys the vocal warm up tool because that's what I'm gonna do in this video. I'm going to make one of these vocal warm ups that I wanna make and I'm gonna show you how you go about doing it. And we're gonna talk just about some exercises as we go about it and why I'm choosing them. So we're on the Tone Gym website and once you've logged in, obviously I see different things because I have the paid membership. So I get more of the games is one of the main things that means. Everything else is free. You just have to have a profile. So in this little toolbox section, you've got a bunch of different cool tools that you can use. I've used the progression generator one in quite a few videos, but today we're using the vocal warm-up tool. This is what it looks like. So you've got this piano, and if you hit just play on any of these, it will just uh, play or through a, sound. a bunch of exercises. Uh, uh. Like you would if you were in a vocal lesson. If you've had vocal lessons, you'll know that most of them are done by somebody who can play piano as well. And they will play through vocal exercises on the piano. That's the main reason I think that piano gets used a lot is it's just so easy to work your way up scales on a piano. So playing through vocal exercises, which are usually based around scales and arpeggios, is, is gonna work really well. You can change the vocal range over here. So if you are a tenor, then it's already defaulting to that, but you can make it a bass if you're a bass or a baritone, alto, mezzo, and soprano. No, I'm an alto. Over here you have all of the warm-ups that they have created, that Tone Gym have created for you, so you can just go through and do some of these. They give you a brief idea in the title of what they are, but obviously you just give them a listen through to get an idea of what the exercise is and then go through it. Some of them are literally just a couple of exercises, others are like a full warm-up routine. So as you can see, I have my own custom one here. This is where you can make your own custom ones. I'm aiming to have another one done by the end of this video. So to create a new warm-up, obviously we just go create a custom warm-up. We're looking to do something for warming up for a gig. So 120 is actually a pretty good BPM for that. The one thing I don't like about this tool is the fact that if I'm creating a full session, right, I can only have it at one tempo, which I find a little frustrating because like, for instance, in the one where I wanna make one for my vocal agility, what I really wanna be able to do is have some exercises that will be designed to go slower and then other exercises that are designed to go faster and some exercises I'm gonna to wanna to do, I wanna start doing them at a slower BPM and then try doing them at a faster BPM and then try doing them at a faster BPM still. I'm just gonna to have to make separate ones for that, which will be kind of annoying. So we're gonna call this gig warm up. So you give it a name, you pick a tempo. If you're looking to do something where breath control is the thing you're really trying to work on, then a slower BPM is gonna be better for you than a higher BPM. Slowing everything down and really holding out the notes so that you have, you're have you forced to really control how much air is coming out so that you can take one breath and do the full exercise. Whereas if you're looking to test out your agility, then for a more advanced agility one, you are gonna want a higher BPM. Anywho, so next you have to create scenes and your scenes are your individual exercises that you wanna do within this particular warm up. These are all the different settings that you can change on it and I'll go through each of these as we go. So our first big one is, do we want an exercise type where we're doing notes or glissando? The main thing this controls is if you hear at the start of one of these exercises. Humming. Mm. 
can hear he tells you what type of noise we're using for the exercise what sound we're using for the exercise projection type as they have named it on here and then he demonstrates hmm Hmm. That's because that exercise is a notes exercise. If it was a glissando exercise, then he would go, hmm. He does that for glissando exercises. So that's how you know which type you're supposed to do. If you're supposed to do each of the individual notes as an individual note in this exercise when they're then played on the piano, or if you're supposed to blend them together into a glissando if you're looking to go up and down. We're going to start with a notes exercise and we're going to start with some humming we're going to go down and we're going to go up and then down so what this means the repetition direction means when you're doing an exercise you'll notice people tend to go up in notes so they'll start with but sometimes they might go down first and all of these exercises they're designed so that you go either up and then you come back down so you get to the top of like and then you come back down like that we are going to go up and down for this exercise but if you were going down and up you just you go the other way you go down first and then up pick our number of repetitions in a second because first we want the exercise so the exercise i want to do first is literally just down on a hum from the fifth up from whatever note is our chord note. So we need sol, la, mi, re, do. That's what those notes are. For those of you who don't know, these things down here, they just re represent the notes in a scale. So you've got do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, then to another do. So you know that these two, if we were doing with C, both the do's are a C. The re is a D. The mi is an E. The fa is an F. It just goes up like that. So it, that's just the way that when you're doing these exercises, they name the notes of the scale. So for this exercise, we're coming down from sol and just going down the notes until we get to do. Da 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 da! Simple, right? Now the question is how many times do I want to do it? I'm not sure. Do I want to go all the way up the octave? That could take a while, but this is our first exercise and it is designed to warm us up quite well. The alto tends to start there. On that C. So it would mean going up to this C and this G. I think that is a good place for our first exercise. So if we want to go all the way up to the octave above where we start, we need 12 repetitions because it's going to go up by a semitone each time. That's how vocal exercises work as well. They go up by a semitone each time or down by a semitone each time. Let's save this scene. Humming is a good one to start on because humming is quite gentle um, and it encourages good breath control. It's, it's one of these restrictive ones we can do to encourage us to just place everything right. So it's a good one to start off with. Another good one to start off with is lip trills. And lip trills are my favorite ones to use for glissando exercises. So I tend to go from a humming exercise to a lip trill exercise, and I'm gonna do a glissando. Now, for your glissando exercises, as you can see, it's two notes. So again, we can pick to go up, down, or down, up. We can pick how many times we want to repeat it. We can pick what we want to do it on. So I'm going to, they call them lip rolls on this, which I don't like. It's a lip trill. Thank you. You can pick the direction of your glissando. So do you want to go up, down? So, or do you want to go down, up? I want to push up into the extremes of my range. So I'm going to do more than an octave because that's how I'm going to push up to my higher notes. This is this interval, which is an octave plus a perfect fifth. And this is two octaves. So that would be me going. You know what, actually no, I'm gonna do a perfect 15th for this. I'm just only then gonna do it five times. And that gets me nice and warmed up into the higher bits of my register. Okay, save, next scene. Glissando, lip trills, but this time we're going down up. Do we think five times again is probably a good number? But I feel like we're gonna want a smaller interval for this. I feel like that could be good, a perfect fifth. Next scene, okay. We wanna do some basic ah type ones. Do I wanna do an arpeggio or? That's another one I like to do. I think I'm gonna do that one because that's got a bit more vocal agility in it then. So I think we're gonna do do, re, mi, fa, sol, 
Can we repeat it? We don't repeat the sol. Fa, mi, re, do. Or do we want to do... Yeah, no. We want to do do, do. So we want to go up, down with this one. How many times do we want to do it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight is a good number for that one, I think. We'll do that for eight repetitions. Okay, for my next one, I want to do something a bit more complicated. We're probably going to do a down kind of exercise. Something like that is what I'm thinking. I'm going to put that it's on a ma, but rather than do this on a ma, I would actually do this on a mi. So we're going to start on the do up from where we're going. One, two, three, down, up again. Two, three, down, up again. Two, three, down, down, up. Down. Should I do it on a me or should I do it on a nay? Let's do it on a nay because a nay is more like a me and I won't forget that I wanted to do it on a nay if it tells me I'm doing it on a nay because a ma is really far back and that's ma 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 and I want to do this more up and front because I want, I'm going to do this quite high up so I am going to do this 12 times. On to the next scene. What, we're not done yet, Emma? No, this is a full warm up before a gig. I want plenty of exercise in this. And I think to end on, what I'm gonna wanna do is. Something like that, a bit more complex in terms of the notes we're doing. Pitch precision in there. Do, mi, sol, do, ti, fa, mi, re, do. Just on R. Just an R. Five times, I think, is a good number. Yeah, five times. Okay, that'll do for this warm up. So let's see what we've actually got. Create warm up. This is where we discover that something's gone wrong with a. Uh, something could have gone wrong with some of these parts. We'll see. Humming. Mm. Mm. Lip roll. <laughs> idea what exactly has gone so wrong there but we're gonna have to fix this so we're gonna have to create a new one and try and fix that I don't know why it's doing that it shouldn't be doing that so it would appear <laughs> that I need to let tone Jim know that there's some sort of glitch going on here because that one isn't coming out right so it's not letting us do the two octave one so I'm just gonna swap that out for the perfect 12th and I will just have to let Tone Jim know um, that it's not actually doing the octave one correctly. It's annoying that I can't just go in and edit that one exercise to fix the problem. Okay, let's try this again and see. This one should now hopefully work, unless there's another glitch in there somewhere that we don't know about. And there's also an exercise missing in there somewhere. Okay, um... We're going to have to give up. This is very frustrating. So I don't know what's going wrong with this because every time I have used this previously, I have not encountered these problems. The playback thing could be a browser issue. The fact that the wrong exercises are coming out is definitely not at, which is frustrating because I assure you it is a really good tool. You could see there from the stuff that I was able to build, you can make some really easy to use vocal exercises that once you've made them, you can just play these through, which I find really handy because I struggle with having to make decisions in the moment about what vocal exercises to do before a gig. It's nice to have just a set routine that I can go to. I will report these issues to Tone Jim and let me know if you have a go yourself and if you spot any other bugs in it, but I'll add an update to this video if anything changes. Okay, hi guys, I am back with an update. So good news, I did actually manage to get it working on my laptop. I remade the warm up that I was trying to make. I have actually included one extra exercise in the remake that I've done this time and I managed to get it working this time with the exception of the lip trill glides that we were having issues with where the exercises were not coming out right, but the actual program not working, the, that issue of it basically cutting off before the end of the full warm up. I have managed to get it to not do that. If you're planning to take it to gigs with you like I am, I would recommend screen recording your warm up. It's not a perfect tool, but it is a very handy tool. Humming. Mm. Mm. Lip 
lip roll. Lip roll. A or A sound. Nay sound. Ma sound. Anyway, I hope that today at least was helpful for some advice around building your own exercises. Obviously, this is a tool that exists that you can use that when it's working is useful. But having a vocal warm up that you can just take with you is going to make it easier for you to warm up at your gigs and is going to make you more likely to do it. So it's worth taking the time to create a little thing like that. Anywho, I'm sorry that this video was not as successful as I was hoping, but that sometimes happens. If you have enjoyed this video, then you might enjoy some of my other content on this channel, which is generally more successful than this. In which case, you might want to consider hitting that subscribe button, but I know that that's a big decision to make, so you might want to check out some of my other more successful videos before you do. But my Buy Me A Coffee is linked below for anyone who wants to check that out, along with all of my socials if you want to follow me on them. That is all from me for this week though, guys, and I shall see you next week with another fun music-related video of some sort. Bye! Shoulder